Now, ladies and gentlemen, our first plenary speaker is a family physician by training with an MBBS and fellowships from the Royal Australian College of Family Physicians. Now, she was involved in the implementation of the healthcare services for migrant workers under SATA Health, And beyond, she has a very keen interest in community outreach for medical care and research in areas of preventive healthcare as well as AI use in healthcare. And today, she will be sharing with us more on SATA Health's journey and innovative approaches to healthcare for migrant workers. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure now to invite our medical director and overall lead for clinical medical services and advisor for migrant workers healthcare and programs, SATA Health. Please put your hands together as we welcome on stage Dr. Cheryl Latha Glenn. A big round of applause for her, please. A very good morning to all of you. Thank you for being here today. I hope the events of today will be both enlightening and inspiring, and most importantly, give us some ideas on how we can further improve our journey in the health of migrant workers. To be a steward of their own health, this is a line I've just borrowed from Jonathan, my colleague in the previous um, video, and it's one that resonates very closely with uh, me and my colleagues. So apart from the work that we've been doing in terms of the primary care plan, a lot of our focus has been in outreach and preventive medicine, and in general to keep this population not sick. But before I get into our efforts with this, I'd like to spend just a few minutes on our journey on how we came to be part of this very vibrant landscape. Um, it feels just like yesterday when we received a call to set up our first medical post at PPT Lodge 1A. Um, it was April 2020. COVID, as you know, was blowing up in the dormitories. Uh, there was not yet any talk of vaccines. PPE was limited. Um, N95 masks were being reused with strict protocols. A whole lot of uncertainty in the world. But under the guidance of the NHG task force, SATA set up its first medical post at PPT Lodge 1A. And this somehow set the wheels in motion for our work in the migrant worker health landscape. Um, since then, we gradually provided medical care in mel multiple, medical dom uh, med multiple dormitories in Kranji, Salita, and Woodlands. The days would start with sick parades where we would be actually assessing COVID patients for heart rate, for checking on their heart rate and temperature, uh, and looking for any signs of worsening COVID disease. But I think like many of you who were also all providing medical care in similar situations in similar times, uh, what we found was while we in initially intended to provide medical care only for COVID patients, we found that a lot of the uh, migrant workers needed care for non-COVID issues. A lot of them had chronic diseases for which uh, they were receiving medical care from, uh, back receiving medications back from their home countries. A lot of them were even sharing medications. Um, Many of them had problems getting access to medications and a lot of them had concerns about the affordability of medical care. Um, I guess most importantly, a lot of them lacked the understanding of their health status in preventing chronic diseases and other diseases as well. Over the next two years, um, Satacom Health somehow stayed in this sector to provide care for migrant workers. Our vaccination center, our Crunchy Vaccination Center, predominantly served migrant workers, providing the Moderna COVID vaccines. Our COVID isolation facility at the Concord Hotel um, also predominantly provided care for migrant workers. And of course, we continue to have our medical posts in the various dormitories. Fast forward to April 20, uh, fast forward to 2021 when MOM conceptualized the primary care plan with many of us trying to understand and predict the future of this much needed health care for migrant workers. And as you know, SATA was awarded three of the six sectors. Um, and then fast forward to April 22 where we launched, the primary care plan was launched uh, and we together with St. Andrews, Fullerton and StarMed um, began this unprecedented journey to provide care for this very important population. Mm -hmm. 
A brief description of the primary care plan or the PCP for those of you who may not quite be aware of it. It was set up to ensure that migrant workers had access to primary health care and support and to also have active public health surveillance in, term, in, in situations where there may be any type of disease outbreak. The employers must purchase a primary care plan for all eligible workers. And these workers are those who are working in the construction, marine shipyard and process sectors. It is optional for all other work permit holders and SPAS holders, except for those uh, who are foreign domestic helpers. The cost of the PCP ranges from $108 to $138, depending on which zone the migrant worker is in. And additionally, the migrant worker makes, makes a co-payment of $5 and, uh, for a physical consult and $2 for a telemedicine consult. This covers most, if not all, of the primary care health needs of the migrant worker under a, under a fixed scope of services. The scope of services includes a statutory medical examination, which might be a work permit renewal or a work pass. Um, it also includes medical consultations for acute conditions, whether it's acute respiratory infections, gastroenteritis, skin conditions. Um, it also includes um, medical consultations for chronic conditions, so diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, asthma, etc. In both acute and chronic conditions, it includes all standard medications that may be required, as well as all diagnostic tests, whether they are lab tests or x-rays, such as um, or diabetic panels, hypertensive panels, etc. Um, the scope of services also includes an annual health screening, um, as well as telemedicine services and, tele and medication delivery to those who may need it. It also includes scheduled conveyance of the migrant workers from their dormitories to the medical centers. There is one additional um, scope of service here, which is the activation of a mobile clinical team in case of any type of disease outbreak. Today, Satacom Health has five medical centers in three of the zones. There are three medical centers in Kranji Recreation Center, Woodlands Recreation Center, and Loyang. We also have on-site medical centers within the dormitories of Sungai Tengah Lodge and PPT Lodge 1B. Um, our total enrollment is estimated at about 265,000 migrant workers. Our medical centers run seven days a week. On average, we see about 1,000 physical consults each day. Most present with various types of acute conditions. Some are infectious diseases, some are related to their work. And those with chronic conditions can now have regular follow-ups with the required panel tests and the highly important health education for lifestyle changes. Prior to the launch of the PCP, we were, as expected, faced with many challenges. There were definitely many sleepless nights for many of us. One of the constructional challenges was fulfilling the criteria of having a pandemic prepared medical center. And so for the medical centers to be constructed in a way that complied with infection prevention and control guidelines, or IPC guidelines. This included having segregated areas for waiting areas as well as registration areas and consultation rooms for patients who, would ha who may have symptoms of acute respiratory infection. So there are UV lights located at the exhaust air ducts to eliminate pathogens, and there are MERV air filters located in the, at the fresh incoming uh, air ducts. These were implemented in all of our purpose-built migrant worker centers. One of the game changers, I think, was the launch of the telemedicine service, which we decided to insource. The team came together to design what we thought would be a suitable app for migrant workers. Together with our CMS vendor assurance technology, the system was built taking into account the needs of the migrant workers, payment modules, language diversity, and overall easy usage. This was a brand new system for us, even though we had dabbled slightly in telemedicine before. Uh, it had to be intelligent to, enough to know that the migrant worker was enrolled in the primary care plan. It had to be able to make um, submissions via the MW, to MW Health to MOM. It also had to be able to send prescriptions to our um, outsourcing medication pharmacy well away, who would then take over the medication delivery. In summary, the, the migrant worker downloads the app and registers their details. Uh, he then submits a request for a consultation and makes the nominal payment of $2. He then joins the queue, waiting for a video callback from the telemedicine doctor. 
Other than peak times, which is usually Monday mornings, the callback generally happens within 30 minutes. If there's a prescription, this is then channeled to WellAway, which is our e-pharmacy, and they then take over the preparation and dispatching of the medications. So this is what the app looks like for the migrant workers. It's relatively straightforward and easy to use. Um, the medical certificate and the invoices are also sent to the app. So we know telemedicine has been in the limelight lately. Um, however, there is a very high level of governance with this. Um, our TM doctors all have a very detailed verification process at the start of every consult to make sure that we know exactly where the patient is located. There is also very strict criteria and a process in place in case a physical examination is required. This is how the medications are delivered. The migrant worker scans a QR code to confirm that the medications have been delivered. And the medication instructions are also in the native languages which help the migrant workers. Despite initial challenges, the app and the overall telemedicine service have been quite a, a success, serving about 300 patients daily and running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The telemedicine service, of course, has brought the access of primary care even closer to the migrant workers and has enabled a swifter mode of healthcare delivery, especially to those who are living in more remote areas. The large medical manpower requirement was another very major challenge for us. In an already highly deficient situation for doctors and nurses, we literally had to double our requirements over a matter of months. The introduction of the healthcare associates was a highly beneficial initiative to counter this challenge. Um, this was an implementation by MOM. Healthcare associates are healthcare workers who can understand and speak the languages of our migrant workers. They, are predominantly, uh, they predominantly include foreign nurses and doctors uh, who come from the countries that our migrant workers are from as well. We started this process first with doctors. Um, they had to have a basic medical degree, they had to have a pra valid practicing certificate from the same country, and of course had to have a decent level of English proficiency. With uh, very strict and well thought of guidelines from MOM and competency checks, these healthcare workers started work with us. Many eventually moved very recently from their basic scope of services, which included triaging, health education, and um, simple procedures, to their expanded scope of services, which includes chronic disease management, phlebotomy, and medication management. Eventually, SATA also brought in healthcare associates who were nurses back in their home countries. Today, SATA has 13 healthcare associates who are doctors in their home countries and six healthcare associates who are nurses in their home countries. They are from Myanmar, India, and Malaysia. They are instrumental in our day-to-day -day operations of the medical centers, and they assist in almost every aspect of the patient journey. Some of them even assist our doctors in taking a very detailed um, health history, as well as taking over the patient for health education, advice, and medication follow-ups. Many are able to assist in simple procedures, and more importantly, they are able to converse well with the migrant workers in the situation that that might be the occasional communication breakdown. Our healthcare associates also help in the yearly annual health screening, administering the PHQ-9 for depression screening, as well as cardiovascular screening. Some of them have also been involved in several areas of um, research of our data. Later this afternoon, you will hear from one of my colleagues, Diana, and much of her research was contributed from uh, our healthcare associates. Another major challenge was the logistical one of enrolling such a large number of migrant workers across three zones in a population that was constantly changing, with migrant workers ending their contracts and leaving the country, new migrant workers coming in, and migrant workers actually moving across the zones. The design of our corporate portal solved a lot of these logistical challenges. It allows employers to enroll their employees, upload a name list, transfer migrant workers from one zone to the another, um, as well as update the migrant workers' records. One of the prominent features is the application of the e-gyro, which has allowed for collection of fees much more user-friendly, um, to both to the employers as well as to us as the anchor operators. So as mentioned earlier, one of our major directions was for the migrant workers to be stewards of their own health. 
um, apart from the services that we provided in the, micro, in the primary care plan as a charitable organization, uh, a lot of our focus was also around the well-being and preventive medicine components of the migrant workers. So we looked beyond the scope of the services required to see how we can better serve this community. Our community outreach team has worked very hard in multiple areas. The focus was to be the plus of the primary care plan, raising awareness and health education and attempting to give ownership to the migrant workers for their health, uh, as well as enhancing the health conditions of the migrant workers. The main areas of outreach was generally in improving functional health of the migrant workers, which I will touch on in a little bit. Um, but there were also areas of touch in mental health, generally through collaborations with our partners and uh, diet education as well as other resources. So focusing on functional health, the team did various means of outreach. There was mass engagement where the teams went down to various dormitories on weekday evenings uh, and conducted various types of educational sessions. There were also smaller group interactive sessions. These were generally in collaboration with employers and other partners. And the outreach efforts were actually quite substantial, with the teams requiring the approval and information of the dormitories and um, procuring various types of goodie bags to incentivize the migrant workers to actually attend the educational sessions. Most of these sessions were also held very late at night, sometimes even as late as 11 p.m., to enable the migrant workers to attend the sessions after returning from work. Various collaterals were also done in the different languages, targeting the most commonly presenting musculoskeletal problems such as cervical and lumbar, lumbar problems as well as shoulder pains. There were also collaterals for some of the chronic diseases such as hypertension. The so-called goodie bags were what we felt would benefit this population, such as topical over-the-counter analgesics. Uh, we know a lot of their diets are not quite optimal as well as mouthwashes and skin cleansing agents. Um, their work environments frequently predisposing them to a lot of skin conditions. Last year alone, the team managed to serve 36 dormitories and reached out to more than 44,000 migrant workers. This year, from January to June alone, they have reached out to more than 50,000 migrant workers. One of our newest initiatives is our rehabilitation services using the Elite Fit app. This has very kindly been funded by Migrant Well. Essentially, the program aims to provide physiotherapy services to migrant workers and uh, with musculoskeletal injuries. From our medical centers, the feedback from our doctors was generally that a lot of, patient, a lot of migrant workers presented with musculoskeletal injuries but could not quite afford to have physiotherapy care. So the aim of this program is to provide increased access to rehabilitation services, uh, which are also significantly more affordable to the migrant workers. It is a hybrid model um, with both physical rehab sessions and using the Elite Fit um, app, which is an AI-supported therapy assistant program, which can also monitor the compliance to exercises. So after the SATA doctor refers the migrant worker to the program, he makes a co-payment of $5. He has an initial physical consultation and is taught to use the Elite Fit app. And depending on the progress and understanding of the app, the number of physical and uh, virtual sessions are determined. This gives them the benefit of not having to come into the medical centers and therefore not having to take time off work. We have so far completed the pilot of this program relatively successfully with 25 patients. Going forward, we intend to have our electric vehicle bus, which will be roving around the different medical centers and providing this care. Uh, the program is intended to continue for the next three years, again with the very generous funding of Migrant Well. Our SATA medical centers in the community have also played their part. Apart from providing medical consultations to the migrant workers, we have also provided highly subsidized ancillary services such as DRPs and DFS. For the non-medics in the audience, DRP is an eye test and DFS is a foot screening test and it is required for diabetics to have this once a year. We have made this a lot more accessible and affordable by highly subsidizing these, um, these services. Uh, since the launch of the PCP, um, we have conducted more than 616 DRPs and DFS. Additionally, additionally we are also providing uh, highly subsidized blood pressure monitors and glucose monitors, and all of these uh, measures have helped the migrant workers to improve and manage their chronic diseases better. 
So what is to come? Now that we have reached a steady state model, we intend to focus on some of the problem problematic areas. Despite the health education that we are doing, the general consensus is that the health literacy in this population is still lacking. Um, so the, the, the common question that we ask our patients, do you have a medication allergy, for example, is very frequently misunderstood as do you have a skin allergy, which makes it very easy for us sometimes to miss these sort of problems. Uh, another recent story from one of my colleagues was a patient who had recurrent herpes, and he failed to present for medical treatment before because he thought it happened every time a lizard excreted on his mouth while he was sleeping. Um, knowledge of sexually transmitted disease, diseases is another area that we need to focus on. There is a critical need for education on safe sexual practices um, to prevent STDs, uh, as treatment for this can be quite costly and very frequently underdiagnosed. We hope to look into this aspect of health education in in even greater detail, whether AI can play a part in this as some sort of a virtual chatbot, or whether we need to resort to the good old-fashioned way of health education talks, we will have to see. We are also in some very preliminary discussions to provide occupational medicine, uh, have an occupational medicine clinic within the uh, medical centers. This, there is a breakout session on this later this afternoon as well. Um, another one of the challenges is having um, the dispensing of medication for our telemedicine patients. The remote locations of, mouth of these dormitories and having to get through the security posts, sorry, um, get through the security posts, um, generally have problems in um, picking up the medications and there is generally feedback that the medications haven't been collected. Um, there are also now several support mechanisms for mental health. Is there a potential for a mental health app for migrant workers? The list is limitless and we need to look uh, deep into this as to what is feasible and what is actually needed. All in all, it goes without saying it is a privilege to be serving this community. Uh, the continuous expressions of gratitude and satisfaction from the migrant workers we serve are deeply appreciated and an inspiration to all of us. The medical operations and support teams also experience a profound sense of fulfillment in their roles and we are honored to continue to contribute to the welfare and well-being of the migrant workers. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Glenn. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the floor is open for a Q&A session. And if you have any questions, you can see we have two mic stands situated right next to the two pillars in this ballroom. And of course, please first introduce yourself, followed by the question. Anyone? It's a very good opportunity. Anything you want to ask, Dr. Glenn is right here to answer you. Any questions, anyone? Really, no questions, which means your explanation is brilliant. Everyone received every bit of information. Or maybe they're a little bit shy. Like uh, I mentioned before, uh, once again, you know there is this pigeon pole QR code, right? So you can actually scan that and also there. And of course, you can do the same thing before our next keynote speakers on stage. So if we have, sure, no questions? All right, then a big round of applause for Dr. Glenn. Thank you so much.